All right, now we're at the solder station ready to do that repair on the power supply out of that LG monitor we just removed. Um, to do the repair, uh, this section of the repair, you'll need to have lead-free solder, the desolder wick to remove the old solder off of the board, diagonal cutters to cut the uh, capacitor leads, the capacitor kit with the capacitors that we're going to be removing from the board and replacing, and then a standard soldering iron. Um, let's get started on that repair. First thing we'll need to do, of course, is remove the bad capacitors on the board. Um, to do that, we'll use the desolder wick and the soldering iron. Easiest way to do that is if you find the capacitor that you're going to be re uh, removing, you look on the back of the board where the two leads come through. If you heat up one lead, the solder will melt, and if you hold the capacitor or touch it with your finger on the other side and kind of tilt it, that lead will pull through the board as the capacitor kind of leans to the side. And then you do the same thing to the other side on the capacitor, and then the capacitor will come through the board. Once you remove the capacitor from the board, then you use the desolder wick to clean the remaining solder that's on the board. So you just put it on top of where one leg was at. You heat it up. As you can see, the uh, solder was removed from the board, leaving us a nice clean hole to insert the new capacitor into. So we'll do that with the second hole. And now we have a nice clean place to insert the new one. So now we turn the board over get our new capacitor that we're going to insert into that location and straighten out our legs. Now if you notice where the capacitors come through on the component side of the board there's a little circle. One side of the circle has a black mark on it, uh, like a negative looking symbol. That's the negative side of the capacitor on this particular power supply. The opposite little terminal has a little positive sign by it. That's the positive terminal. And when you look on the capacitors, one side is going to have a gray stripe with the little negative symbols on it. That's the negative side of the capacitor. That's the negative terminal or lead. So when you're installing the new capacitors on the board, just make sure you put the negative lead of the capacitor into the negative marked hole on the board. Insert it all the way through. You separate the legs. Just fold them to the side so that the capacitor doesn't come out for just a moment. Set the board back down. You take your soldering iron and your lead-free solder. You touch it to the component leg. Once it heats up, you apply a little bit of solder. <clears throat> it should smooth, flow smoothly around the joint. And do the same thing for the other leg. Now that we have the capacitor soldered on the board, you take your diagonal cutters and just remove any remaining part of the leg. And now we've replaced the first capacitor on this board. And when you're doing power supply repairs like this, there's several things you need to keep in mind. You need to replace all of the capacitors, not the ones that are just the, the visible ones that have the bulging tops. Um, once you have some that have bulges, those have failed. The other capacitors are now under stress because they are being subjected to uh, a lot more ripple current than under normal circumstances, so they are going to be getting damaged. They may not show damage right now, but it's best to go ahead and replace them all on the board while you're doing the repair uh, instead of having to come back at a later time, disassemble the unit again, replace the capacitors that you didn't do the first time. It's also important that you use the right type of capacitor. Uh, you need to use, besides having the right microfarads and voltage ratings, which are written on the side of the capacitor, you also need to make sure that you get capacitors that are rated for low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance. They need to be high ripple current and high temperature because the boards inside these have no ventilation. They will get very hot. Uh, and then the ripple current and the low ESR have to deal with the switched mode power supplies, which this board is one of. Uh, if you don't have the proper ratings, uh, the the power supply board will either not start up or if it does and start up at all, the capacitors will fail within a month or so and could potentially damage other components on the board when they do because they are really not designed for this type of installation and can cause bad problems. So do, you do want to make sure you get the right kind of capacitors. 
Uh, we do have the capacitor kit for this model available on our site. Um, the link should be right below the video. If not, you can get to it at www.ccl-la.com slash catalog and then look in the monitor repair section under the ViewSonic and you'll find the, or excuse me, under LG and you'll find the uh, proper kit for this uh, model that we're working on here. So let's go ahead and replace the rest of those capacitors uh, and get this monitor back up and running. Get the other large one here. See, it's preparing these monitors is you know, quite easy. Uh, most repair shops don't want to do it. They just want to sell you a new monitor. Um, so it, you know, just order the parts, do the repair yourself, and save you a bunch of money because we're buying another 27-inch uh, LCD monitor is several hundred dollars. You can get the repair kit and do the repair yourself a lot cheaper. Plus, you may learn you know how to repair electronics in the you know in the process. So, save some money and get a little educated. Okay, we have the two major ones. This is a very good monitor. I mean, it's a shame to, you know, if I throw it away. Well worth the few minutes to take it apart and replace the capacitors on it. One small capacitor. The reason we do them one at a time is so that you know what the value is of the capacitor that you remove off of the board. Um, as you remove one, you replace it with the equivalent you know, like value of the new one. Um, if you do get mixed up as to which capacitor goes into which location on the board, um, if you go back to our website, we do have the capacitor values and the board locations in the repair guide. Um, so, you know, in case you get lost or or forget which one goes into which location, it is available there. Again, that's www.ccl-la.com. We have other repair guides too for other types of equipment, not just monitors. We have. Uh, printers and PCs and how-to tips and um, a wealth of information to you. While you're there, you may want to look at some of the other um, articles that we have written. Okay. These smaller capacitors on this particular board that are in this little cluster are actually were called startup capacitors. Um, they are what basically tell the power supply to turn on when it's the appropriate time. Um, and so again, you know, we need to make sure that they get replaced. Otherwise, your power supply could be in full working condition, just never get the signal to tell it to power up. be our last one, then we'll take it over, put it back in that monitor, and 
see how our repair job did. Alright, cut off those last two leads. And now we should have a fully repaired power supply board. Uh, we'll take it back over to the monitor and install it and see how we did.